and you know the collaboration process and that kind of thing so with these people from these different countries and you being how you are and where you're from did you ever feel maybe intimidated or did you feel like i'm i'm this was i was i'm born for this like how did you feel yeah i feel like i was just i mean whenever you're look whenever i'm looking for collaborators it's always about their approach to the work and their interest in the work so i felt like he liked my poetry and so I felt like because he liked my poetry, he was going to be able to do a better job at illustrating it. Um, I mean, I put out feelers to several illustrators when I got to the point of, you know, to, of reaching out. And there were definitely people who I was like, they would just collect the check and send me whatever they've made on the computer. You know what I mean? And I could do that if I just wanted to get something done. But like this particular person, I felt like he actually had his own little message that he wanted to get out. He created the little character that's on the cover of the book. Um, and that character like became a very important part of like the scenes throughout the book. Um, if it was just my brain, I wouldn't have had that. And so like, then that's why I always, I, I like to do the little reflection and remember like when I feel like I know better, rem reminding myself that sometimes like getting someone else's energy and approach can actually sync up with what you have going, you know? So for me, it's like, I was never intimidated really. I felt like I was bringing them a quality piece of, writing and if they were a serious artist then they would want to approach it as seriously as i approached the book writing process um so it worked out very well okay so now as we move to the towards the end now so we talked about this episode for all my writers i know they're gonna resonate with this episode a lot but as always my target audience you know everybody's obviously not a writer but as i keep saying it, we just said in so many different ways writing is essential it's therapeutic and it's also a tool for your mental well-being and mental health overall. So you may not necessarily be working on a book or poetry or, you know, a rap or nothing. But let me tell you how it's still good for your mental well-being. And also these tips are good for those writers out there who want to enhance their writing skills. So the first thing it says is to practice expressive writing. It says, as mentioned earlier, expressive writing has been shown to improve mental health in various studies, such as those conducted by Penn Baker and Bill, who I just said about three times today. To practice expressive writing, spend 15 to 20 minutes a day writing about your thoughts and feelings, experience without worrying about grammar or structure. And popular blogs like Psychology Today and Tiny Buddha often discuss the benefits of expressive writing. The second one says, set realistic writing goals. Break down your writing test into small and manageable goals to help you stay motivated and track your process. And it says, the right practice at Popular Box suggests setting specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound SMART goals for your writing projects. And that's the SMART thing that that's what it broke. That's what that's the acronym for, for those that don't know. And with that, let me say something about that. I used to do that with writing essays for myself and then other people. What I did was so it didn't seem too intense. And it's just an example. Now, of course, if you are in school, this could help too, but this just give you an example of how to break stuff down. So say for instance, you got a 10-page paper, right? How I did it for me was I would have one day dedicated to just finding all the sources I'm gonna use. Then I had another day dedicated to picking out the whatever quotes and things that I thought would be good for the paper. Then I had another day where I spent, I could go a little more if I wanted to, but I had a day just dedicated to writing out my intro because for some reason, me trying to get my intro together takes a minute because once I get the intro down, everything else just kind of flows. And then if it's super long, I may, you know, do the intro and then do a chunk that day or I might do an intro and then the next day do the rest of it or do part of it the next of that day. Either way, you see that there is a structure so that you don't feel overwhelmed. And that's kind of how you should do things 